Hi everybody, welcome to the Emory's Memories channel. I'm your announcer, Gary Beatty. This channel was created to feature interviews by Ralph Emory. There are over 125 interviews by Ralph for you to enjoy on this channel. This channel has also become a collection point for rare and in some cases never before seen shows and interviews. What you're about to see is one of 14 classic interviews hosted by the Lagarde Twins from Sydney, Australia. It's part of a TV series they created, and it's called Down Home, Down Under. Now, these interviews have remained in their private collection, and they've never aired on radio or television until now. Let's watch their one-on-one -on -one interview with Ricky Van Shelton. Hi everybody, welcome to the Emory's Memories channel. I'm your announcer, Gary Beatty. This channel was created to feature interviews by Ralph Emory. There are over 125 interviews by Ralph for you to enjoy on this channel. This channel has also become a collection point for rare and in some cases never before seen shows and interviews. What you're about to see is one of 14 classic interviews hosted by the Lagarde Twins from Sydney, Australia. It's part of a TV series they created, and it's called Down Home, Down Under. These interviews have remained in their private collection, and they've never aired on radio or television until now. Here's a classic interview with Holly Dunn. Welcome back to the God Twins Down Home, Down Under. Now here is my brother Tom to tell you about our very special guest. She was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas, and learned early in life that music and the creative spark was something of a family affair. You know, Tom, she has been writing, recording, and performing state-of-the-art country music for some time, and is now one of the hottest female artists in the music field today, and her name is... Holly Dunn. And we're very proud to introduce you, her to our Australian friends, Holly Dunn. Good day, Holly. Thank you. Good, Good day, Holly. Let me ask you this first question, Holly. Have you ever been interviewed by twins before? I, I'll have to say this is a first. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? It is exciting. Let me ask you this. Um, what was going through your mind, I know, because it's one of my favorite songs, and I, want to, I don't want to forget this, is Daddy's Hands. Were you close mm -hmm. to your father? We are, we are close. So actually, the whole family is very close. And uh, I wrote the song about six years ago in 1983. I was about uh, 25 years old at the time, I guess, and feeling like I had missed out on saying some things to my father that I wanted to say. And I didn't want to miss an opportunity to do it when he was around to, to hear it. So uh, I don't even know where the idea really came from. I was getting dressed one morning to go to my job as a songwriter mm -hmm. in Nashville. And uh, it just started coming out of my head. And I wrote it down almost in one continuous uh, piece and sent him a little cassette tape of it for Father's Day uh, a couple months after that. When you got through recording it, did you uh, uh, think that it would become the hit or a, a signature tune that... Uh... You know, I had no idea that it would do what it's done. As a matter of fact, I almost didn't turn it into my publishing company uh, because I thought it was too personal. I didn't think anybody else would even relate to it. And nobody at my publishing company that had heard it really got all that excited about it at the time. So. Uh, what was happening in country music back then was the urban cowboy thing right. was really happening mm -hmm. and real personal songs, real sensitive personal songs, nobody really cared much about them. So I just sort of turned it in and, and forgot about it and a couple of years after that Sharon White of the Whites heard it and uh, she, they recorded it and that made me sort of start thinking well maybe, maybe it is a good song in general and how did it do for them, for the whites? I mean, did they it put it on an a album called A Whole New World mm -hmm. album, and uh, they never put it out as a single. They wanted to, but they changed record labels or something in the meantime and never put it out. Now, growing up in Texas, Holly, uh, how many were in your family? 
There were six of us, including mom and dad. I have three older brothers, mm -hmm. and then did I'm they, the baby and the only yeah. girl. So <laughs> spoil rotten. <laughs> spoil rotten. Yeah. And now, did they? Now, did you get a lot of encouragement from you know from from your mom and dad? How old were you when you, you thought to yourself, "Well, I want to get in the music business. I want to be a songwriter, a singer." Well, I grew up singing. I have. Uh, an older brother, just immediately older than me, Chris, uh, six years older than I am, who began playing the guitar at a very early age, and I just sort of picked the guitar up to imitate him, I guess, when I was six or seven years old. And By the time I was in high school and then later on in college, I really kind of had the desire to, to do music all the time. I was doing it all the time and writing songs and beginning to perform a lot and uh, by the time I graduated from college Chris had moved to Nashville and mm -hmm. had established himself as a songwriter and was doing quite well so I thought well if big brother can do it maybe little sister can too. Uh, Holly you know when you hear the words today uh, in, the, in the country music business like traditionalist, uh, progressive, uh, contemporary, uh, new artist and you see this uh, movement going uh, in, in the business uh, do you feel that uh, you've made a, a good, strong contribution to, say, uh, sustain or to revive some of the traditional uh, country music? Well, I'd like to think I have. You know, everybody that's doing this, I think, would like to think they're making a, a mark uh, mm -hmm. or a difference in the, in the business. Um, I'm really happy to see that traditional country music is back in mm -hmm. style and uh, it always comes back to it. It's funny. It's it's a real cyclical thing. I've seen it ha in the ten years I've been in Nashville. I've seen it happen. Uh, it was it was happening when I first moved here, and then we cycled back to the uh, uh, more what I call real commercial sounding country crossover type music mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of pop influences. And now it's sort of cycled back, and it'll cycle on again, you know, to something else. But uh, I, I'm glad that I was here at the time when it was back in fashion and I could, uh, could do my music and, and have some success with it. Did you, you, have, you, you're you're going to be happy to know that here in Australia you're one of the very few new, as I guess, new female artists that are getting a lot of airplay in Australia. That's and fantastic. They, they really love your music. Well, I, I, uh, I think that's wonderful. I've always had a real affection for Australia. I don't even know why. It just seems like a beautiful place. and. Uh, my first manager uh, was born and raised in New Zealand and married uh, oh, yeah. a lady by the name of Jewel Branch, who I understand was an right. entertainer down there. Mm -hmm. So I, I have sort of some connections, and uh, I'm thrilled about that. That's well, great. Well, uh, Australia and America, where we've been friends and neighbors for a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Holly, when, when uh, I know you got rave reviews on your uh, latest album. You didn't get one. Tom and I were going through all the reviews. You didn't get one negative review and you must be so excited about your brand new album uh, The Blue Rose of Texas. Texas. Who uh -huh. came up with the idea? Well the title is actually a song on the album that my brother Chris and I wrote and uh, wrote especially for the album. We mm -hmm. didn't really know at the time that we wrote the song that that would be what we'd call the album but it just seemed fitting to me and I really try to play up my Texas roots mm -hmm. So we call it, and it's funny now because the, it's a moniker that sort of stuck with me. People call me the Blue Rose of Texas now. I think it's beautiful. And uh, so that's great. I'm, I'm glad that it's almost become a, a little title, you know, that, that become goes with Become ide identified. Uh -huh. with, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Daddy's Hands will probably be, uh, always be your signature mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. How many songs uh, uh, does Holly Dunn screen before going in to make an album. I mean, right. you're not going to just go and take 10 songs or 12 songs. How many songs do you go through uh, and say, well, okay, uh, we're going to select these 10 or these 12? Mm -hmm. How do you decide that? Well, it's interesting you ask this because I'm doing that right now. Uh, my brother and I are going through just vast amounts of material. The last album, the last two albums that we've, we've co produced together, and we're co producing this newest album. Uh, we average going through about 1,500 to 2,000 songs, something mm. like that, between the two of us. So that's a lot of uh, a lot of material. Some things you get again. People will. I'm hearing some songs. I was playing a tape this morning that was sent to me, uh, and I heard a couple of songs that I'd heard for the last album, and, and 
sometimes they sound better to you the second time around. So it's always a good thing for songwriters to just keep, if you think you've got a song that you just know is good for an artist, just keep sending it, even if you've sent it to them five times, because you never know when that, that fifth time that the artist hears it, they may go, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Do you really listen to them if sure. they send them? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holly, uh, Nashville is a very competitive place, I know. Uh, what was one of the biggest hurdles that you had to overcome when you first went to Nashville? Probably uh, it would have been an internal hurdle, not an external mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it was just getting over feeling intimidated by all these wonderful songwriters and talented people that are in, in Nashville and uh, that you're competing with on a daily basis. That was probably the hardest thing, learning to believe in myself and believe that, that I had something valuable Mm -hmm. that might interest somebody else. Competing against yourself. Against yourself. Rather than and it's competing. still my biggest hurdle. It's still yeah. the, the hardest thing to, to keep, to keep the, you know, your self-esteem up and, and uh, when, when you do hit some bumps and things in the road. Well, Enthusiasm. You right. know, but life is like that, the hills and valleys. Right. It must have been exciting for you to, uh, didn't you do a duet with Kenny Rogers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What and was that like? It was wonderful. As a matter of fact, it's going to be our next single, and uh, I'm real thrilled about that. It was great. I was sitting at home last October, uh, a year ago, uh, over a year ago, and uh, I was in a little little uh, slump because my record label had uh, MTM Records had mm -hmm. folded and. Mm -hmm. I was a little concerned about what was going to happen to me <laughs> and this great start in my career that I had uh, gotten going and didn't want to lose any momentum. So I was sitting at home pondering that and I got a phone call from Jim Ed Norman, who's the head of the Warner Brothers record label here right. a, or in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So uh, Was Kenny he, easy to work with? I mean, oh, he's he... wonderful. He's just, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He's uh, totally self-effacing. He, mm. he has no, if he has an ego, you'd never know it. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, he, uh, he's uh, a good uh, man. He well, really they say is. the bigger the bow, the easier it bends. You and you know, know they, they mm. say humility, Holly, and I believe this. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking a, a little more of other people. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he does, and he's very generous with his time. We've, we've toured together, and mm -hmm. he uh, really goes out of his way to make uh, you know, his opening act. Matter of fact, he doesn't even call you the, the opening act. He calls you the supporting act, which and I think is a real yeah. statement. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times when you're a young artist uh, playing for somebody of, of Kenny Rogers-type stature, type yeah. stature uh, you get sort of shuffled aside. You get you get the less uh, less of everything. And uh, Kenny is just what? you're treated like like royalty. When you're one, 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 one more, one more. Okay. Because she's on the thing with you know you you uh, uh, said a statement in one of your interviews where uh, you had to uh, you had a um, a motor home a motor mm -hmm. home pulling a trailer right and you were opening for Waylon Jennings and you and uh, or whoever it was yeah, George Strait and they had four yeah. big buses right. and two big semi trailers right. and he rolls in Holly Dunn with my the trailer <laughs> on the back yeah <laughs> but that's, that's humiliation great, in the purest form <laughs> uh, you know what <laughs> but it's good Bill's character I have a lot that's of that's right <laughs> amen to that When are you coming down to, uh, to, to play in person for our Australian friends down here? Because they would just love to see Holly Dunn. I would love to. Anytime you know, we can get it worked out, I'll, I'll be on the plane well, first. See how much money I've got here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably almost do it for free, you know, just for plain fare. <laughs> oh, you won't have to Well, you see, you just said a thing there, Holly, that, that is so important. There's no substitute for enthusiasm. And for young people like yourself, that really love the business and you really have to love the business don't you think mm, oh you do It'll, if not it's the most miserable place to, i think with any job even if you're working in a factory or you're herding sheep or whatever <laughs> if you don't really want to be there then you're in a pretty miserable place when within we, yourself when we got into the business uh, i guess we would have sung in front of a fast moving train <laughs> as long as we didn't get killed <laughs> right. you know so sing on the street for pennies and and i know that everybody that gets into the business they, they come in sometimes with a misconception, don't you think? Mm -hmm, I think so. They think it's, uh, it's all going to happen immediately, that it's all going to, it's all, all the glitter is going to be there 24 hours a day. And what it really amounts to is uh, for every hour you're on stage, there's 23 that you're in transit, you're in the back of a bus, uh, 
sleeping in, in a bed that's about this wide and, and moving and you're eating uh, lousy food and, <laughs> and being shuffled here and there and you're away from home and your fr family and friends. And, uh, but the you moment know, you walk on stage... The moment you walk on stage... It's all worth it, it's right? It's worth it, yeah. You know, but you're fortunate. You're really fortunate that you have a wonderful brother, Chris, mm -hmm. that uh, you can bounce off. You, mm -hmm. Have you always been close, you and Chris? We've been very close. We're the most alike, probably, of, of the four kids. And uh, we've just always shared this love of music and writing. And uh, he, he's been a big help to me. He came um, down here first and, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Nashville and uh, established himself as a songwriter. Mm -hmm which helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Does he go on the road so with you too? He did in the beginning some, not a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but it, he's now he's really tied up as a producer. Of course, he, he and I co-produce me and he's producing uh, people like Janie Fricky and uh, some new artists for some mm -hmm. other labels. So he, that plus his songwriting plus being a daddy and, mm -hmm. and yeah. married and all that, he sticks pretty close to Are home. you married, Holly? No, I'm not. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Won't be long. Won't be long <laughs> after this interview. <laughs> what, 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 what do you do for relaxation when, when you uh, come off the road? I know people ask you this question mm -hmm. all the time, you know, just to relax. Yeah, well, um, during the summers, I have my boat out on a lake about an hour and a half from my house in Nashville, a beautiful lake called mm -hmm. uh, Tim's Ford Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go putt around on that and scare all the fish for the fishermen. <laughs> they get real mad at me. And uh, I, I visit with my friends, and I, I sew a lot. I make a lot of the clothes that I wear on stage. Did you make that? I didn't make this That's one. I beautiful. knew I'd say that, and I'd have on something that I didn't make. But yeah. uh, uh, I do make a lot of the jackets and things that I wear Do on you pick stage. your own clothes out when you go shopping or when uh -huh. you... Yeah, I, to I have total control over, you know, all that. I, I can't imagine having somebody... I know some artists, some uh, female artist friends of mine have shoppers, professional shoppers that go out and shop for them, which is a wonderful luxury to have, but I, I don't think I could wear something that somebody else picked out. What a great classic one-on-one -on -one interview with Ted and Tom, the Lagarde Twins. I want to tell you about their book, The Lagarde Twins, Showbiz Hustlers. Let me take you back to the beginning. These twin boys walk 15 miles across the bushlands of Australia to a tent with a dirt floor and folding chairs. As the projector started up, the movie appeared in black and white on the screen. And there, for the first time, they saw Hopalong Cassidy. They ran almost all the way home and told their mom, we're going to become cowboy singers. Let me read the introduction to Showbiz Hustlers. Being raised in the bushlands of Australia in the 1930s and 40s was a rough and hard life. We didn't think about it back then because that's how life was. You have to live the hard life to understand it. But we also made a picture in our minds of the kind of life we wanted to lead, and it became a beacon that has guided us on our long journey in show business. We hope and pray that our book falls into the hands of our fellow strugglers and dreamers to give them unfailing encouragement to pursue their hopes and dreams. Above all else, we want to give God all the praise and glory for our long lives and for His mercy and grace in dealing with us throughout the years. So grab the reins and ride over one million miles with us from the bushlands of Australia across seven continents through 23 countries and 45 of the 50 states in America. Let's ride! Ted and Tom Lagarde. They appeared in Vegas, movies and TV shows. And for you Trekkies out there, get this. This book is packed with pictures and stories and is a must read. We'll put a link below the video so you can get your copy of The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers. The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers makes a great gift. This book is about twin brothers from Australia who had a dream, and it came true. This is Gary Beatty, and as Ted and Tom Lagarde would say, Good day, mate.